Hey guys, this is Cherokee from Tutorial Grid, and on this little episode, we're going to teach you how to do some uh, comic book style, like superhero effects. Uh, we have everything. Uh, this first one we're going to do is uh, this little intro that we did. I uh, will show you it now. It's basically, uh, this is the actual full 20 second little film thing that we uh, kind of produced. It's pretty cool. Well, uh, the first thing we're going to be creating is this very beginning part, this explosive deal, which is going to be a lot of fun. So basically, what we have here are some basic effects. We have a uh, particle effect, we have this smoke and blur effect, and we also have this uh, glowing type of effect that we're going to use. And uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, I also created another type of version of it on here, and we'll just take a look at what it looks like. Really kind of simple. We have the glowy effect. We have a actual lens flare. We also have the ground glowing with it. Uh, it looks a little different, but it's just another type of effect you can use for this uh, intro. Notice how he is not there, then he transports in. But that's pretty much what happens. Alright, so in order to start this composition we're going to go to composition, new composition and we're going to type, we want this to be 1080 so it's going to be 1920 by 1080 the footage we have is 23.976 frames per second and it's only going to be about 10 sec, uh, yeah 10 seconds long and alright so uh, in our project we are going to have uh, our top layer and our bottom layer so we're gonna go ahead and put those in there so our top layer is going to be Rob standing like a uh, like a BA <laughs> so this is our frame that we're going to use whenever he pops in and then we also have the frame underneath it which is a uh, just a blank slate with uh, the background so first off let's go ahead and pop that back on and move this down about this is a second so we're gonna push it about half a second in and we're just gonna take it out so it looks like he appears bam he appears out of nowhere but we also have this little effect back over here where if you notice the tree moves and that's sad so what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask so we're going to click on our top layer here and we're going to hit this circle this ellipse tool and we're going to click and drag the ellipse around him double click on that mask center it up pretty uh, nicely to where he's in the center of that basically it's going to be on his crotch this little middle point here haha <laughs> crotch <coughs> alright and uh, now that we have that, we're also going to hit MM on our mask tool, and that's going to bring up all our mask properties. And um, we have what's called the mask expansion. Uh, so since uh, this mask is only going to be showing this what's inside this circle, we can bring down the pixels, and it's going to basically just eliminate him completely out of the picture. So whenever uh, this comes in, he you can just boom, and it's back in, and the uh, the mask is going to show up, and he's going to be there. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it all the way down to where he is invisible. We're also going to bring the feather up just a tad bit, so it's kind of a smoother transition uh, into the mask overlay. So uh, now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and click the time our uh, keyframe assistant here click the little stopwatch and that'll create a keyframe and we're going to move up a few uh, frames and we're just gonna bring that mask expansion all the way back up and now he is back in our frame so we brought that up to a thousand pixels so it's going to be completely back in so we have out and in so let's see what that looks like 
and he's in. Now you're probably wondering, this looks like crap. <laughs> Which you're right, it kind of does. But we still have a lot of work, well not really a lot of work to do, but still some uh, some work to do. And don't worry, all of this footage I'm going to put into the download link, so you'll be able to download that shortly. Now. Next up, we have a the uh, the uh, particle, kind of, not the particle illusion, but we have this uh, kind of smoke that uh, is appearing around him whenever he does appear into the scene. So what we're how we're going to make that is we have this smoke layer which we got from Video Copilot from uh, their Demon Cam video. We are using that same particle loop. So we are going to right click on this loop. We're going to hit Interpret Footage and hit Main. And we want this loop to loop at least 20 times. So it's going to say 1 here at first. But you want to go and hit on 20. It's going to loop this at least about 20 times so you can move it around a pole. Uh, move it around without it actually uh, affecting or changing anything too much. So now that we have that interpreted, we're going to drag it down. All right, now you notice there's a big box around it. Uh, usually what I do on this since we're only going to be using uh, pretty much all of this but <clears throat> since we're only going to be using about this big you don't really have to interpret this footage at 1920 by 1080 so the effect that we're going to be using is only going to be able to view what's inside of this bounding box so, but that's okay because we're only going to need to be using it about that big. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an effect on this called CC Sphere, which is this little plugin right here. It's only 8-bit, but uh, we're only using an 8-bit channel. Usually I use 16-bit channels, but for this tutorial I'm only going to use 8. So we're going to drag that on top of it. So it creates this little sphere-like type effect that uh, this moves around and it kind of looks it looks pretty cool but uh, that's our sphere effect it kind of brings it around and makes it ovular now to create this onto the background just kind of move it into place and we're also going to hit our mode and we're going to change it to add now that makes this uh, smoke effect look really really nice so whenever that this comes in it goes Actually, we'll just go ahead and put that right directly on top of it. So whenever it comes in, it's just like, and we have our this uh, sphere effect. Actually, I kind of want to make this a little bigger radius, a little bigger. Kind of makes it look like he has a sphere, force, force, force sphere. <laughs> Funny words. This uh, sphere, sphere, spherical force field. There, I said it. Man, that's hard to say. But uh, we have this spherical force field around him. Now, it looks okay, but I think we can make it a little better, so we're going to add a glow layer. 32-bit glow layer. Let's go ahead and pop that down. And we are going to change the threshold. I'm going to bring that down just a bit. And we're going to bring the radius of that up and the intensity up. I want this as far out and as wide as possible. Bring the threshold down here. So now we have this glowing type of uh, effect. We have this spherical, glowy, cool little layer here. It looks pretty neat. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now we also have uh, underneath this layer a really dark type of layer which uh, to do that we're going to duplicate this so hit control D and we're gonna duplicate that layer and we're gonna get rid of the glow so delete the glow but we're gonna change the mode to I believe it is silhouette Luma and that's gonna bring a darker type of look to this and we're going to bring that down and then we're also gonna put it underneath our glow layer. I'm going to bring this out and actually we're not going to do that. We're going to cancel that out. We're going to push that back a little bit in time. We're going to bring it forward. That way this kind of has a different type of look. 
has this really kind of evilish background, but we're going to change a few things. We're going to go into our curves and we're going to put a curvature adjustment on the back layer. We're going to just make this as dark as possible. So it, in order to change our luminance to a silhouette, we're going to make this technically as light as possible. That way it's going to see the exact opposite. So we're actually going to push our brights and our curvature lever on this sphere and notice how this black layer is becoming even darker and there's going to be more of a uh, this uh, dark evil looking matter instead of a light matter because the, the darker it is the less it sees the lighter it is the more black our silhouette's going to be so let's take a look at what this looks like and this really black evil force that is behind this rob is pure evil look at that smug face but uh look this looks pretty cool now another thing that we added to bring this all the way into play is a uh, particle layer. So what, how we're gonna make that is we're gonna go up to layer, new, solid. And we're gonna make sure this is a black solid. Then we're gonna go into our effects and presets and we're gonna type in particle world. So it's gonna be CC particle world. I'm gonna drag that down. Now this, the particles is basically this really quick type of emitter. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring this up to just right before this kind of pops in. And we're also going to go up to grids and guides and we're going to turn off the floor. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, uncheck the grid. There's usually a grid down here whenever you have it first brought up and we don't want that to be in our composition. We don't want to look at that because the grid is ugly. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to produce here and then we're going to change the X position and the Z position. So the Z position basically puts us forward and back in Z space, which is 3D space. So I want mine to be fairly far back and I'm going to change my X position to where I think Rob's going to be, which is going to be about right here. So we're going to go ahead and pull that there and I'm gonna actually change the Z space some more and bring that over so yeah it looks pretty good <clears throat> all right so we have this emitter and it's exploding out but it's not really that cool looking there's there's nothing special about this so what we're going to do is we're going to change how this particle kind of flows in so what we're gonna do is we're going to go to particle, change the line to a uh, quad polygon, which are these little kind of uh, squares, basically. And we're going to change the color. I'm going to change it to white. And our depth color is going to be like this darker kind of gray. So there's going to be, actually, let's make it more of like a bluish gray. That'll be nice, right? Kind of like this, a little bit of bluish gray. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, we're also going to change the birth size to something a little bit smaller. And we're also going to change our composite. I kind of want this to be added in, make it a little, a little crisper looking. And we're going to, now uh, that we have like our particle pretty much figured out, it looks like this, uh, I don't know, just things are exploding out from within. We're going to go up to our physics layer. So hit physics. And uh, explosive is good. I do want this to explode out in a twirly, well, not a twirly type ma manner, but I just want it to explode. And tons of crap is just going to go everywhere. So I'm also going to change, I'm going to first change my uh, velocity here. I just want, like I said, I want crap to just explode everywhere. So whenever this comes in, it's just like, and then that's it. I'm probably going to change my birth size. I think that's a little small. So I'm going to go back down here to particle and birth size. And bring that up just a tad bit. <clears throat> that looks pretty good. All right, back to physics. Uh, I don't really like to have gravity up too much 
because I think it looks cooler whenever it explodes out. It just explodes and goes freaking everywhere. So it looks like and all this crap just goes everywhere. Uh, velocity. I usually uh, don't do anything with velocity because it doesn't really do anything at all. At least in this uh, this instance. Uh, resistance. I don't really want there to be any resistance because, like I said, I want this stuff to go everywhere. Extra, you can kind of mess around with, but in this instance, it doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, extra. Uh, that'll work. Whatever. Um, and directional axis, I think, will be good. So this kind of looks pretty cool. I also want to, uh, oh yeah, I do want to change the birth rate. I do want there just to be a ton of crap just everywhere. And it's just flying. Uh, so now time to animate this. Uh, we're going to go to the very beginning here. And since it's already kind of exploding out right at the beginning, I'm going to stop it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change birth rate to I'm gonna hit the stopwatch so this is going to be the start of my scene and then it's just going to explode out like so and I'm going to quit it right here so I'm going to just hit uh, zero actually what I want to do uh, yeah actually I'm going to go ahead and hit go to effects CC particle world I'm going to hit my little keyframe assistant here which is just gonna add another keyframe that's exactly like the one before it and then I'm gonna go after that uh, that keyframe and I'm just gonna shut this down so I'm gonna hit zero so that way my particles are no longer in existence so just explodes out quickly so uh, I also kind of want to change the birth rate here I just want crap to go everywhere boom boom yeah I might want to change push this back just a tad and I kind of want there to be more stuff around here so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this again and then I'm going to change my birth rate at the beginning to even more but I'm also going to change the uh, particle size and I'm going to change it to something even smaller so we have a little bit more of a, a random seed notice how we have some particles here and here that are large and then we have the really really small particles makes it just look a little bit cooler uh, also I'm going to add a uh, pull these down, take it to add and add. Boom! And it's just crap goes everywhere. Uh, another thing to make this look a little bit more real, we're going to turn on our motion blur. So click here for motion blur. Also uh, on our particles here. So right at the beginning, we just have this exploding, just nasty, freaking explosion of particles. And it's just, and then he appears. Now, another thing we're also going to do is we're going to add a lens flare to our uh, scene. I kind of want to pull a velocity, actually. Where is this one? I want to make this look a little bit better. Physics, velocity. Pull our velocity up on our smaller layer just a tad. Look at that. That looks that looks good. Boom. Crap just goes everywhere. Alright. Now that we have this little small effect kind of done, I'm going to <coughs> uh, go and create another uh, solid. So go to layer, new solid create another black layer. Now the next effect we're going to be using is called a uh, optical flare. Uh, this is by Video Copilot. Pilot, Video Copilot. Uh, so it's going to be called optical flares by Video Copilot. If you don't have this you can go to videocopilot.net and you can download it there. Uh, I believe it's like 200 some dollars and you get their uh, lens flare plugin as well as the feature pack which I highly recommend because it's just a really cool 
um, package. I mean, it's a great plugin if you want some realistic and uh, some non-realistic lens flares. But this is the basic lens flare. Um, we're going to go hit Options, which is going to bring up our optical flares menu. <coughs> you can customize a optical flare if you want to, or you can go into your presets. You now, if you downloaded the preset package for optical flares, you'll have the light motion graphics as well as some of these natural flares. Uh, I like the motion graphic flares, and then I like kind of changing them a little bit uh, to just kind of get a sort of taste for what I would like the film look like. But uh, I'm going to be using the spore effect. I really like the way this one looks with uh, the blues and also the you know, magentas here. But I am going to change the global parameters. I'm going to change it to about white as well as my big flare, my glow here. I'm also going to change it to white with a little hint of blue. And that should be it. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm also going to change the mode down here from normal again to add. And I'm just going to move that down here into the my composition. And I'm also going to move this right here. This basically is where your uh, your camera kind of sets. So if you have the camera set kind of a little off center, usually this is the standard is right in the center, which I mean it looks good, but if you want to create a little bit more of a dynamic composition, you can kind of customize this to where you think your camera would be set up to uh, associate that lens flare with. And usually I bring it pretty close because uh, the camera that I was using is a AX2000 and it has like this uh, little and I think I was about 30 to 50 millimeters away at a slight angle so I'm gonna bring this angle down just a tad so we have this and to bring this in I'm going to change my brightness I'm gonna go ahead and just completely cut this out and I'm gonna hit stopwatch that's going to start my my layer here and I'm going to bring this back and right when it gets about right here I'm going to bring it up to about 150 and then I'm going to shut it back down blam just bring that out so we have just have this quick burst of uh, energy I just kind of And he's there. Okay. Um now this looks I mean this looks pretty cool. It's uh, just a really random explosion type of effect and we have all these effects down here. Uh, now to really make this look better, uh, I'd also turn off on the motion blur on the uh, the layer here as well because lens flares just don't happen without any motion blur. I think I kinda wanna elongate that too. Down here to effects, optical flares, I wanna kinda prolong that just a little bit. That looks pretty cool. Okay, now let's get to coloring this uh, this scene. So how I usually color is I use curves and saturation. So um, to really kind of get a good sense of this, I'm going to create a layer, new adjustment layer. And I'm going to put this underneath uh, all of this that goes on top of here. So I'm going to go ahead and curves and bring that down onto our adjustment layer. Usually I crush my blacks pretty well. Bring those down, crush that, bring up a little bit more of the contrast, make sure it's quite light. Bring that down just a tad bit. And change this to half. That way we know what I'm looking at. Alright, that's 
looking pretty good. Also, I changed my saturations. So go down here, hit saturations. <sighs> I'm going to change my yellows. So I'm going to bring those down just a bit. That way we have more of a uh, even image. And then I'm going to bring down a little bit of my reds. There's a lot of red in his face right there. So I'm just going to pop this up just a bit. And then I'm also going to... One of the things I really like is pushing my greens. I like having a lot of green in my composition. Don't know why. Always have but that's looking kind of cool and then uh, our next effect that we're going to be using I'm going to hit layer new adjustment layer again I'm going to keep that on top and then I'm going to hit I'm going to type in tri tone now tri tone is going to pretty much make this uh, layer into a kind of like a, tr a tr three tone composition and it's going to make this uh, it's going to change all the effect parameters on all of our layers underneath so I'm going to add this to a uh, bluish layer which is going to look a little bit more like that this is also called the Harry Potter effect <laughs> you know how uh, in all those movies it's really all the newer movies that's just uh, dark with this huge blue filter all over it yeah that's pretty much what this is and we're also going to blend this into the original composition now if you blend it all the way in it just completely cancels out the tritone but we're just going to color this just a little bit at about a 50 percent ratio now notice the greens that i kept in notice how those are just popping really nicely but everything else is really blue or well, not blue but it's like a grayish blue and it's just kind of creepy looking let's see here But uh, this is looking uh, pretty good. <laughs> Looks pretty good right there. It just kind of pops in. Now, one of the things I did add on uh, in this one is we have this kind of shake effect that I added, like this earthquake. Now there's a lot more particles in there and you can play around and mess around with the settings as much as you want, which I highly encourage you to do. It's gonna make your effects look a lot better. Uh, like this is about two to three different layers of just particles manipulated on top of each other as well as uh, we added the glow effect a little bit more. And then I moved around the uh, the this black layer that's right underneath it so it makes it look kind of opposite of each other so it's just wrapping around him in this good and evil type siding but we also added this uh, shake letter that's right on the end of it as well as the optical flare that initially brings him in but yeah it's just pure chaos um, but in order to add the uh, kind of shake what you want to do is uh, what I did was go to composition, change my comp settings. I'm going to bring this down to about 900 because I like letterbox. <clears throat> so I'll bring that down to 900. Create a layer new camera. Hit OK. And we are actually going to change these into 3D layers. So we're going to change our smoke, that, that, pretty much everything on top of it into a 3D layer and we are going to manipulate this with our camera so if you go up here you can kind of see we're going to move in and out of our camera space this is also going to help manipulate our particle layer so if you notice whenever we move in this uh, particle layer kind of moves with it just a tad so in order to make this shake we are going to uh, create a keyframe we're going to hit P on our camera and we're going to hit keyframe and then whenever it goes here we're going to hit track XY camera and we're going to move this over to the right or the left or whichever you choose we have that and then it's just 
going to move back so this explosion so it's going to move back in this layer over here and then we're going to go forward a few more frames and we're going to move it down a little bit we move forward a couple more frames and we're going to move it up and we're back down and just kind of move that up to where we think it should be so we have <laughs> Now, also what we're going to want to do is turn on motion blur for all of these effects as well. So go ahead and turn on motion blur. And so we're do 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 quiet neighborhood. Oh my gosh! Na da da quiet boom. I'm going to move these out just a tad. There we go. And we have explosions. Now usually on the end of this explosion it's not going to just stay random or stay in one spot. So usually what I do is I just kind of move it like it's tracking. Just move it a tad. That way whenever it stops and explodes it's just kind of like still moving a little bit you know it's just like okay nothing moves and yeah it just has a little bit of a jittery effect kind of neat yeah it looks pretty cool But uh, that's pretty much the basics of this uh, effect here. Boom. And feel free to play around with this. Obviously, <laughs> all the stuff that I do on here usually takes a lot more time. But this is pretty much the basics of how this was created. Which is that effect right there. A lot of work went into it. Uh, we're also going to discuss how to create these effects here as well as the energy ball with this uh, optical flare on it and a bunch of these slow motion effects. By the way, on this camera, the slow motion effect is terrible. Never use a on-camera slow motion effect. It just did not come out the way it should have. But that's uh, pretty much the tutorial on how to make uh, this type of effect. So I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Cherokee Turner with Tutorial Grid, and I uh, hope you guys learned something. So hit us back. Make sure to check out the uh, Avid channel as well as some of the channels that are underneath. Make sure to subscribe and comment. So uh, you guys have a good one.